Hello friends, welcome to Sandeep's Biology. So in this video, I will be talking about inheritance pattern of beta thalassemia. So we have seen beta thalassemia in previous video. Let's talk about its inheritance pattern. So beta thalassemia is autosomal recessive trait. So it inherit in the manner of autosomal recessive pattern. Autosomal. recessive pattern and we know that humans are having 23 pairs of chromosomes among these 23 pairs 22 pairs are autosome plus one pair is sex chromosome that is xx in case of female and xy in case of male so these the genes that are responsible for beta thalassemia are present on autosomes so genes that are responsible for beta thalassemia are present on chromosome number 11 so that is an autosome chromosome number 11 is an autosome and it is inherit in pattern of autosomal recessive trait so recessive means both of the genes are affected then only beta thalassemia disorder is seen so let's see some genotype and phenotype of these beta thalassemia so genotype and phenotype first case is normal if both of the genes let me draw a chromosome so this is chromosome number 11 chromosomes are in a pair so that these are homologous chromosome and there are two genes coding for the beta globin chains and these genes are present one on each chromosome so if both of these genes are functioning then I will indicate it capital H capital H so both of genes are present and these both of genes are functional so the phenotype will be normal so the person is normal next case is one gene is functional and other gene is affected it means that it is having some kind of mutation so for this genotype the phenotype will be it is called beta thalassemia minor so the person having beta thalassemia minor x the person x as a carrier carrier for beta thalassemia so the person having beta thalassemia minor is carrier for the beta thalassemia and the person can live normal life since the person can produce some amount of beta globin from the affected gene and one gene is functional so person is asymptomatic and can live normal life but carries the beta thalassemia to its offspring and third type is that both of the genes are having some kind of mutations or both of those genes are affected so genotype is small h small h and phenotype is called beta thalassemia major beta thalassemia major and the person having beta thalassemia major since both of these genes are affected and no beta globin chains are produced so this person or the infants after birth they can live up to one to two years and after one to two years the infants will die and if frequent blood transfusion is done the person can live up to 15 to 20 years in case of beta thalassemia major right so beta thalassemia major is only seen if both of these genes are affected so if both of these genes having mutation then only these beta thalassemia major is seen that's why it is called recessive right now let's see some crossing between uh, these genotype 
So the crossing between normal and beta thalassemia minor genotype, what kind of offspring the crossing will produce? Let's see. So if one person is normal and one is minor, so capital H, capital H and capital H small l, this is normal and it is crossed with beta thalassemia minor. So we will see what kind of offsprings this type of crossing will produce. First the gamete of this person will be capital H, capital H and the gamete of the person having beta thalassemia minor will be capital H, small h. Now let's cross these gametes. So we will cross, we will take first this capital H and we will cross to these two and then we will take this capital H and we will cross to these two. So let's cross. Now this capital H and small h. Now this capital H and this capital H, this capital H and this small h. So these are four offsprings the crossing will produce and if we see here 2RH capital H capital H genotype and 2 are capital H and small h genotype. So the, if we see the phenotype, 2 are normal and 2 of springs are beta thalassemia minor. So we can say that 50% of the offspring are capital H capital H that is normal and 50% of the offsprings are capital H small h that is beta thalassemia minor since minor person can live normal life so these all offsprings can live normal life and these all are asymptomatic now in next case the crossing between beta thalassemia minor so if both of the partners marrying are beta thalassemia minor what kind of offsprings or what kind of progeny they will produce let's see so here in this case both are minor so both are having capital H small h and capital H small h genotype so this person will produce gametes capital H small h and capital H small h now let's cross these gametes so we have we will cross this h with this 2 h and this small h with this capital H and small h. So let's cross capital H and capital H then capital H and small h then we will take this small h and capital H but capital is written first so it is like this and then these both are small h genotype. Now let's see what kind of offsprings are producing here. So one is capital H, capital H genotype, two are capital H, small h genotype and one is small h, small h genotype. So 25% normal, phenotype is 25% normal. 50% beta thalassemia minor beta thalassemia minor and 25% chances are there the child will beta thalassemia major child so 25% chances of production of beta thalassemia major child so if the person both the persons are beta thalassemia minor and there are 25% chances that they will produce beta thalassemia major child.
So these kind of marriages should be avoided to stop the production of beta thalassemia major child because these kind of infants after birth they will die between one to two years due to the anemia and if frequent blood transfusion is done the person can live up to 50 to 20 years and after that the person will die. So marriages between beta thalassemia minor person should be avoided and remember these 25% chance is for each and every time woman conceive there are 25 percent of chance that they will produce beta thalassemia major child right and beta thalassemia major phenotype will only expressed if both of these genes are affected if both of genes are recessive so that's why it is called recessive trait so this is how beta thalassemia trait or beta thalassemia disorder is inherited. I hope this video is helpful. If you are watching this video till here, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and if you want more videos like this then subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.